Hello, this is Obsessed with Assessment podcast. We love exploring all things educational assessment. Up until now, we've done a lot of looking at theories and concepts. In this episode, we're going to do something slightly different. We're going to be talking through some current affairs. I'm excited about this one. I am actually looking forward to this. It's a new strand. Maybe we should call it something like assessment in the news on the 7th of november 2024 if you're listening to this in in many years time uh, bridget phillipson the secretary of state for education in the uk government delivered a wide-ranging speech to academy trust leaders that gives arguably the strongest indication so far of the direction she wants to take education and and in particular assessment. So Emma and I are going to be wading through the transcript of her speech to discuss the whys and wherefores and to see if we can draw out any interesting conclusions. I'm Sam Denno. I've spent years working in schools and ed tech. Assessment is my latest obsession. This is Emma Louise Rose McHale. Hello, uh, I'm Emma and I'm the primary equivalent to Sam's secondary expertise um, today. And you've revealed to me in in private that your throat is not up to it today. It's It's the time of year for it, you know. We probably have to caveat this whole discussion with the understanding that there will be a degree of spin involved with any governmental announcement. So we'll approach everything here with a hint of scepticism. But there are some clear messages that come through. It's also worth saying that personal political opinions may well be expressed But those are our own personal views and not those of our impartial employer, Twinkle. Sort of solid disclaimer. (laughs) (laughs) We'll run through some of the headlines of Bridget Phillipson's speech and then we'll focus on the assessment update because that's, I feel like she builds up to kind of the assessment moment. I don't know if you've got that. Yeah, it covers curriculum and assessment, doesn't it? And um, yeah, certainly doesn't, doesn't happen early on. No, no. <laughs> saves, saves it for the end, either because it's so unimportant or because it is the icing on the cake. <laughs> it is the pinnacle. <laughs> Firstly, how do we feel about Bridget Phillipson's buzzwords that she kept returning to achieve and thrive? She linked it to her own story. Like, that's the actual quote, isn't it, early on? Yeah. Uh, that achieving and thriving was her own story. Um. So I like that. I like that it was it was made personal to her that that she she hasn't come from a perhaps an expected background for a politician, which I think I I quite like when um when it's somebody making decisions over education. Um, I I mean as a phrase, achieve and thrive. It, it's not it. You can't really go no no. I don't want that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want that to happen in schools. It it is a very it is a very buzz phrase. If yeah. I'm being honest. I think there might be significance in the order as well. So we start, it's achieve first and then it's thrive. And I wonder if, I think I'll I'll, I'll kind of come to this. Oh, that's picking it apart. That's interesting. (laughs) Yeah. But, yeah, achieve. So it's the attainment first, but also side side product of happiness, (laughs) (laughs) hopefully. Um, Interestingly, Philipson didn't back away from a curriculum that is rich in knowledge, um, but also strong on skills. Now, whilst the two aren't mutually exclusive, the knowledge rich curriculum is potentially one of the problems with the, the current curriculum. In my opinion, there's there's too much to teach and there's too much to learn. And this prevents natural child development and it results in teacher burnout. Yeah, so, it's, bo- it's both fitting it in to a timetable as well as actually fitting it into a brain. Yeah. So I thought it was interesting that she went there again, because that's very much been the, the, the previous government's kind of knowledge rich has, has been very much what they've peddled as well so it's interesting um we got a nod towards 
teachers making a difference. In fact, did you notice Philipson says that they are the factor that make the biggest difference to life chances? So not curriculum, I mean, I, uh, not yeah, exams, I, teachers. I, I agree. I know the people delivering those things, obviously, but I, I do agree. A strong teaching workforce is is the centre of it, isn't it, of a decent education system. And we've said in previous podcasts, we don't really have that at the moment, like the whole sort of teacher retention, recruitment, all mm. of that stuff. Um, so it, it, I think a lot of these things are, well, it, it, if if the Labour government put the money where the mouth where their mouth is, then, then these are positive things. I love this line. She says, or she says, she said, Achieving is just one part of it. I want children to do well and be happy in school too. I want all children to achieve and thrive. Those buzzwords again. So her suggestion is that exam results, achievement standards will rise because of happiness. Do we think that results improve because of happy children? I think happier children find going to school and concentrating at school easier, which then has a knock on for results. I don't think that's controversial. I think that's pretty well known, isn't it? Like anecdotally, like as an adult, if you're in a, a relaxed mood at work, you I know I get more stuff done if I'm in a good mood rather than if I'm distracted by something else. If you've got children coming to school that are genuinely, you know, genuinely have anxieties and, and stresses elsewhere and in school, then it's going to be harder for them to concentrate on what's going on in terms of content and learning. Do we believe that that happiness is in and of itself is really a motivation for the Labour Party because that's their suggestion. Oh, this is maybe like super idealistic but you know a happy population of both children and adults in theory gives you pretty productive children and adults yeah. um, and whether or not happiness is the goal <laughs> over the productivity part is something different I guess. It's certainly the dream isn't it it's, it's very aspirational thinking it does seem to me that every time she mentioned well-being, she also mentioned exam results. So so she, she's not talking about happiness in exclusion and saying, well, that's good enough on its own. Yeah. So it wasn't until the end of her speech that, that Philipson got on to assessment directly. And like I said before, it felt to me like she'd been building up to it. She's not actually said anything particularly clear about assessment up until this point. She still hasn't said anything particularly clear, but she did give us a little bit more. She teased a little bit more. She said, exam results open important doors to opportunity for young people. They show what pupils know and can do. They are and will continue to be the anchor of our education system. Very clearly saying we're not moving away from the system we've got then. (laughs) I think that's really important. So firstly... I disagree with her assertion. So exam results, as they stand, only show what pupils know, not what they can do. Agreed. Uh, Because it goes back to the conversation of knowledge-rich versus skilled-centred curriculums. In England at the moment, many of our teachers, dare I say most, are teaching towards the exam. They're teaching knowledge for the exam and not skills that can be used in the future. So then the bit where she said they will continue to be the anchor, I think is the bit that you were talking about. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. So in in spite of the earlier rhetoric, this doesn't feel like a a particularly notable step change from actually what we have already. We've got exams and they are the anchor. But she went on from there. She said A-stars alone, interesting that she said A-star, A stars alone do not set young people up for a healthy and happy life. And where previous governments have have had tunnel vision, we will widen our ambition. And I think that widen our ambition is is fairly critical to what she's saying. It'll come in later. If we want to tackle the epidemic of school absence, children need to feel that they belong in school. If we want to transform the outcomes of all young people with SEND, children need to feel that they belong in school. If we want young people to leave our school system, not just with A stars in their pocket, but with a sense of power and purpose, children need to feel that they belong. Sounds nice. Again, with my sceptical hat on, I do end up thinking 
why do the Labour government want young people with a sense of power and purpose who are healthy and happy but potentially don't have good qualifications? Mm. It, I, I, I love it as a concept, but, but it, it seems unrealistic. But then I think that a statement that followed helps with this. She says, if we fall into that trap of chasing a narrow shade of standards, structures driven rather than child focused, then children with SEND get swept to the side and attendance crashes. A sole focus on achievement is doomed to fail. So she's mentioned widen our curriculum earlier and here she mentions the trap of chasing a narrow shade of standards so this is this is what i'm speculating via the curriculum and assessment review philipson is looking for ways to offer more than the traditional exams that we have at the moment we're gonna see i think a greater range of assessment methods and a greater emphasis on vocational courses and while exams will remain an anchor and she did say the anchor but I suspect they won't be the the only anchor and there's likely to be less focus on high stakes for all and I wonder if things like T-levels which the Labour government have pledged to keep will become more important as more skill-based courses. I'm a very big fan of, you know, an increase in other like vocational options like apprenticeship, apprenticeships and things like that. I think yeah. I think they have a massive part to play and we don't really have enough of them. Yeah, they've always been treated as the poorer cousin to A levels, haven't they? If if, if you're not doing an academic course then then you're kind of second class citizen whereas this seems to me an indicator that we might be we might be turning towards those vocational skills a bit more not dissimilar to some of those nordic countries and of course they are the countries that were name checked in the original labor party manifesto for education i would love to see um the options that are available in some of those countries actually you know like a list of you know i've talked about apprenticeships but something similar to that like what actually is available in those countries i think over here we think of apprenticeships are uh, for people going into specifically going into trades as well and actually there's there's a massive range of them there's just not enough of them so i think that's those are those are the main things that i've pulled out i think i don't know if if we were to summarize how we feel about this this speech as a potential way ahead what what do you think emma okay so I think achieve and thrive and, you know, making sure children are happy at school is never, ever going to be a thing that we all do at. <laughs> That's great. Um, there's very little detail given so far as to how that's going to work in practice. And one of my big concerns at the minute um, is te- and teachers say it as well. It's like teaching, leeching into almost social work and parenting, like other things that should that should other other bodies that should be taking on some responsibility or or be supporting with that that are also not very well funded as well if we're talking about social services and to say we want everybody to be happy and included is bigger than just saying to teachers make an effort to make everybody happy and included it's investing in send education it's investing in social services and the although it's you know the idealist is like oh yeah amazing let's make sure everybody has a really lovely happy and um well resourced childhood as well you know we're not we're talking about children coming from economically deprived back backgrounds too when we're talking about it to just say make sure everybody's happy is is easy but really really hard in practice yeah really hard um perhaps as well like you say opening up different opportunities so that children aren't coming to school going well I'm never going to pass a GCSE so why am I bothering if they know there's another option the motivation then then can be there I'm interested to see how it pans out in terms of the what actually happens yeah that's that's a really good place to finish it I think I think as you say detail light but but has the potential to offer something it sounds good as a start (laughs) 
Great. Well, thanks for listening. Uh, you can reach us on assessment at twinkle.co.uk. Oh, please leave a message if you can find anywhere to leave a message. Uh, like, subscribe, do all those things. And we'll see you again next time. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.